What is up, goons, gangsters, and gamers? It's your boy, The Good Tonight. Today we're going to be talking about the Opscore Carbon Composite Fast Non-Ballistic Mandible. So, mandibles are cool little things. They plop into your helmet, and they give you a bit of extra grill protection for a variety of different missions. So originally we had got the Force on Force Mandible, which was more of a financial constraint. It gave the uh, facial protection we wanted, and also clipped into the old style of helmet, just going up on the rails there. Whereas this one actually requires the newer skeleton shroud and all that good stuff. So the skeleton arc rails and everything, so it can actually use the shims to just pop right into the helmet, which is really cool. In addition, it doesn't have the uh, same level of protection as the Force of Force Mandible, that one being more so designed for uh, tanking sim rounds and whatnot, but this one being more for riding ATVs, giving you some breathability, still allowing you to do communications, you know, jump out of aircraft, all that fun stuff, keep the bugs out your teeth, and does a, has a lot of cool functions, most particularly this grill piece here, but not a whole lot of reviews about it, despite a few um, a few people being like, oh hey, Opscore made this new thing, and they have a few videos out, but they don't really go into any detail or depth or discussion of it, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So, original Mandible did some uh, cool things, popped into the helmet, made it nice and beefy, gave you neck protection, had that little flap and stuff. Really difficult to use with uh, amps or any form of uh, comms, whereas this one's far more uh, mild down. So before we start, plug this into the helmet and get started. Quick look out here. So clips into the side of the helmet. That's what these are for here. You can see it's actually got some uh, work going on right there from going in and out of the helmet for practice use. Those are bolted on by uh, two little hex nuts. And you adjust it. doesn't have the same down and forward adjustment as the uh, force on force mandible, but it does have a for backward adjustment so you get extra room if you got a big old schnoz like I do. Initially it came completely maxed out and it was like just up on the face not terribly comfortable but small little adjustment now we get the boom mic and everything in there. No problem easy peasy. This little rubber disc and screw here holds on the front little cover and this actually with that uh, bit of rubber on both sides lets it pop forward and swap out to the side so you can you know eat food drink some coffee, do whatever you're doing with the mandible on, talk clearly, and then put it back over. Easy peasy. Let's just bolt on down there. A few vents for better airflow. I think the vents are going to be the big thing, because with the force on force mandible, all the air you exhale, straight back up. And if you're using the step and visor, like they're both designed for use, then that's uh, hot air goes right into the visor. And it's going to give you some uh, foggy vision. So hopefully the vent clears out a lot of that. Um, there's a little nubule in here, a little recession that lets the nub from the thing go into play so it doesn't pop free while you're doing all your other cool high-speed stuff. So, that said, we're going to actually plug this on into the helmet. So, as you can see with the new shims on the skeletonized rail, there's that little slot right up there. Actually, I could probably clean that up a bit. That would probably fix a lot of the uh, problem we're having where it's starting to tear away the, at the paint, but it's whatever. Those little slims is what it pops into and then it clips in to the little side nubs here. Skeletonized rails are pretty cool. We're going to be doing a video on those and the updated uh, all-purpose shroud and all that stuff later. I just really need to get the Velcro attached to the helmet. So we got the whole shebang upgrade set going. So we're going to pop this on real quick. Oh yeah, by the way, cool new patch. Came in the mail. Pretty exciting. So pop that on there. Clip that into place like you do. Let's get our amps going real quick here. Let's see. There we go. So now I can hear myself talking. I can see you guys. So you can get the little visor going up here. We can take the mount off entirely and you got the nice cool stuff. You go, hey, we're going to be doing some sort of fast movement. We're going to ride ATVs, but tactically. So we got to have our tactical mandibles to keep all those bugs and nastiness out of your teeth. So this takes a bit of practice. It's still relatively new. I haven't had too much time to work with it, but... Eventually I'm going to get it, so eventually it's all going to work out. It's really hard to find those little nubs. So this is going to be all muscle memory, a lot of practice. I'm going to assume it's even more unpleasant with gloves on. Well, there's one. So you got the right one, you just got to find that left one. Dun dun dun, dun 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 dun. Let's see, there's a bolt, there's a piece, come on. There we go. Once that's in there, you get that little push, click it into place, like so, and we're all set. So there's a bit of forward and backwards wobble, so I might have to uh, put some electrical tape on it, the unit itself. Because that's just a bit of play. It's not a huge issue, but if you're bumping up and down and doing crazy stuff, that wobbling is probably going to drive you crazy. 
Then the uh, coup de gras. Clip on your goggles. And bam, you're all set. You're ready to go. And that's, uh, that's all there is to it. Is that all the way on? Feels really weird. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's all it takes. You're equipped, your face is protected. You can pop this open. I'm gonna take a uh, wild guess and just assume this is called like the glory hole and they're probably gonna be referring to this as the uh, gimp mask in the tactical high-speed super cool units. So just a uh, observation that I'm fairly certain is gonna be true. So can you be clear if I pop this open? I could get a straw, I could take a sip and get some Starbucks and you know, all that cool stuff. Put that back on. Bam, we're comfy. So how does this interface well, obviously with the columns, you can see there's the uh, mic port, and I was actually practicing. There's plenty of room in there, so you can get the mic up on the side without any interference. I'll protect that from wind and stuff, so you still have clear communication. So, when you do get your rifle going, though, I'm going to get bothered with the sling right now. You get the rifle, you turn on the red dot sight, and yeah, you can still get a really clean sight picture, sight alignment, if you're using the uh, Unity risers. Without the Unity risers, you're gonna have a pretty unpleasant time, but with them, it's entirely doable. Well, that's really, yeah. So where's that? Where's that impact? And it's impacting right up here, because we're having our buttstock interference come in. But you know, with the risers, not a huge issue. We can still make it work. And actually, there's no interference with handgun. You can still get the handgun going just fine. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And when you're done doing all your cool super high speed operation stuff, you just pop your, your visor free. It's, it's fogging a little bit. It's probably just because it's hot, but most of the air is coming out through the vent. So we're going to have a bit of a hot spot here, but it's keeping all the air from bouncing back up into the uh, goggles, which would be incredibly unpleasant and very troublesome. So these goggles feel a lot closer than they usually do. Might need to tighten that down a bit. See where it's shimming in there. No, it should be fine. But yeah, so pretty cool. A nice little tactical get mask with vented, <laughs> vented glory. Oh my god! I guarantee you, the actual cool kids on the field are definitely gonna be calling that. But you pop these nubules free here when you don't need it no more. It comes right out, and you're back to doing your normal stuff. Pop that free, bam, and we're back to nice, cool, easy breezy operations. So turn that off. There we go. And yeah, so. That's um, pretty much all there really is to it. The adjustments, as you can see, there's the length adjustment right there. It gives you a little marker so you can better align it on both sides. Something that's slightly more challenging with the uh, force on force mantle will not be a huge issue. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. If you, any of these parts get broken, um, well, you got different components that are pretty easy to swap over and fix and whatnot. So, But yeah, your key, uh, key thing to look out for is going to be right there. For your rifles and stuff, that's where the buttstock's going to be impacting, which seems to be a issue across all the mandibles. The only things I've seen that doesn't really have that issue is the Soder tactical respirator, but that doesn't. Uh, that's got a bit more challenging airflow. Still pretty good, but you know, to each their own. So this gives you a lot more face protection. You can do your Sub Zero cosplay. You can do your fuse from. Uh, was it Rainbow Six Siege cosplay? It just does have looks a lot like the usual. The fuse has like massive goggles and like a tiny mandible, so she's got a big helmet too. A lot, a lot going on with that game that's not relevant to this discussion. But yeah, so if you're looking for something cool, simple, just make sure you have the uh, upgrades. And I'm probably going to shim this on down with some electrical tape, just a single strip over there and over on this one, two or three, if needed. But that should basically clear up that little extra space that's in there as long as a rattle around inside the uh, little shimmed area. So that's the review. If you guys got any questions, comments, or anything crazy like that, just let me know. It does work with a lot of stuff with because it's ultra lightweight and it's got that little... This is way tinier than the uh, freaking massive force on force one. So I think that really helps out a lot with the comms. So. Alright, so that's all I got for you guys. Cheers, stay chivalrous, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.